Hi, it's Michelle from Aliso, and I'd like to talk to you about sewing with curves today. You'll find curves in garment sewing and in many quilt patterns. For instance, this double wedding ring. So you have curved pieces around the border and you can use bias tape on that for binding. So the bias binding will stretch and go nicely around those curves. And the double wedding ring itself has gentle curves, many of them to form the double wedding ring. So as difficult as sewing curves are, if it's a elongated curve and it's a gentle slope, it's not as difficult as say maybe something that's a little bit tighter. I really wanted to make a quilt for uh, my granddaughter and I wanted to use the drunkard's path tool. And so um, I was a little intimidated by it and I tried it and I gave it up. But then a friend of ours, Jen Carlton Bailey, she has an amazing method that she uses a glue pen with. So today she is going to let us share that uh, process with you and I'm going to go through it step by step. And it will also be up on our blog. So please sign up for our newsletter, visit our blog, and then you can view um, all of our YouTube videos as well from our blog. So here's what um, our block will look like. So a drunkard's path or curvelet, as Jen calls them, looks like this. And the curve itself here is, is pretty tight. So I was a little bit concerned about that, but Jen has us make a very scant quarter inch seam allowance, which helps fold over and press really nice and makes this nice curve. So let me show you the quilt top that we're going to be making today. So here's the quilt top, it's complete, and it has 12 blocks. So I made um, each row three wide, and I sewed four rows together. So we have 12 blocks all together, and then I put some two inch sashing in between each block. And I still wanted to make my lap quilt a little bit bigger. So what I did is I sewed a nice six inch border along the sides and the top and the bottom. So I used for the main quilt for the blocks, the Drunkard's Path Circles, I used a really beautiful um, collection by Tula Pink for Free Spirit that they sent me. So I have a nice fat quarter bundle and I was able to mix and match and do some really fun things with that. They also sent me some fabric from Anna Maria Horner's collection. And I, it was really amazing how the colors really blended in nicely with the Tula Pink uh, fabric that I could put together. So this is what I chose to do on the borders. So don't be afraid to like mix and match and have fun with your colors. So um, Jen uh, gives some great instruction also on her Instagram feed. Please, like I said, visit our blog. There'll be a supply list there with some written instructions that um, paired with the video should really help you make doing this quilt top pretty easy. So let me clean up and I'll show you the supplies. Here are the supplies that you will need to make the quilt top. I've chosen Tula Pink fabric from Free Spirit. I have several different colorways from one collection so I know they'll coordinate nicely. And I'll be using the Curvelet tool by Jen Carlton Bailey, better known as a Drunkard's Path. I'm using her 4.5 inch tool, but if you have one already and it's a little bit different size, we can certainly talk about adjusting the quilt top to uh, work with your tool. You will need a rotary cutting mat as well as a rotary cutter. Now the 45 millimeter is great for straight edge, but for the curved pieces, I like to use a 28 millimeter. It's much easier to manipulate. You'll need scissors. And of course, it's always great to have a seam ripper some pins and needles, which is always good to have on hand. You'll be using a coordinating thread. I'm using a more contrasting color, just so you can see the stitches a little bit better on film. And if you like to chain piece your blocks, then this little notion is really great to have. It fits next to my sewing machine and it's nice and sturdy and it's from sunflowerquilts.com. So, and it's a little bit, a little thread cutter, cutter, which really makes fast work of cutting apart your chain blocks. And with Jen's method, you will need a glue pen, which is an integral part of 
what she uses in her process, which has made sewing with curves a possibility for me. I'll also be using my Oliso mini project iron and my wool pressing pad. So let me clean up and we can get started. Now we're ready to go on to the next step and cut out our template pieces. As you can see, I did the main part, the curve, and the background piece. So let's start with the larger piece, and this is the fabric that I'm going to be using. Now you can also put some double-sided tape underneath this if you're worried about it moving. And if you prefer, you can also draw with a marking pen or pencil for fabric, and then you can use your scissors to cut out if that's what you feel more comfortable with. I like to use my 28 millimeter rotary cutter on the curves. I just think it's a little bit easier to handle. And I always do the curve first. I have my Olfa rotating mat, which I find extremely helpful. So I can move it to the exact angle that I need. So since I'll be using two of the same fabric pieces in my circle, I'm doing a double layer. You can probably use up to four layers um, to make it go a little bit faster. So let's do the background piece. Here's my background fabric. And this one's a little bit fussier just because it's smaller and you might want to make sure you really give it a nice press uh, down to hold it. And you want to always do the curve inside first because if it moves at all, then you can adjust on the outside. And then I will do the sides. Okay. And make sure you always close the safety on your rotary cutter. And then here we go with your pieces. Next, I'll be showing you Jen's method of doing the curves with a glue pen, which is simple, easy, and has been extremely helpful. I used to be a little intimidated sewing curves, but this method is really quite easy. So let me go on to the next segment. Okay, now we're ready to glue the two pieces together. I already started here. Oh, I have company here. Come on, Luna. <laughs> she always likes to barge in. So I already did two pieces here. You can see there's a nice curve. That's my first block of my circle. So I'll be taking my glue pen and I will be gluing half of that curve. If you have some problems figuring out where the half mark is, just do a nice little finger press. You'll have a little crease. And you're gonna do the same with your background piece. Now with right sides together, match up the flat ends right there, okay? And then since it's cut on the curve, you have the bias of the fabric, which will give you a little bit of stretch and get you around that curve really nicely. And here we have our creases meeting up. And now you're not going to be starting from the middle. You're going to apply your glue stick. And don't worry, um, in the beginning, I probably applied a little too much glue, but it washes out with water. You're going to start on the opposite end the same way, flat ends together, and then you're going to gently press that into the curve like that, okay? And give it a nice little finger press like this. And you can see here's your second block and what a nice curve. So you're going to take that to the machine and you're going to sew a scant quarter inch 
seam right along the edge. And you're going to be using a small uh, stitch size length. So maybe 1.5, 1.6, 1.8, whatever your machine has on there. And what that does, it really helps when you open it up and press it, you won't need to clip your edges and it will hold the curve very nicely and not show your stitches on the other side. So let's go to the machine and get that sewn up. So I've set my machine to a short stitch length, usually half the size that you would normally do for say regular quilt stitching. So my machine is a 1.8 and I'm going to chain stitch my blocks together. So I'm doing a scant quarter inch. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna go nice and slow because I'm going to butt this next block right up against it leave a little space and then you can speed it up a little bit and i'm going to prepare the next one And this way you're not stopping and starting. It will save you a little bit of time. You might have to lift that up, the presser foot up a little bit. Make sure that's nice and flat. And then here's your blocks. Now that we have our blocks chain stitched together, I'm going to take my thread cutter that we talked about earlier, and I'm just going to go right like this. And look how fast and easy that is. So here we have all the blocks. The next step is to look at the inside, which is the right side, and you're going to gently pull them apart because there might have been a little bit of glue there and you wanna make sure when you're pressing your blocks open and flat that you want to make sure it's not stuck together because that will throw your measurements off a little bit. Okay, there, I think we got that all set. So I'm going to flip this over and we are going to press the seam allowance to the inside piece. So you can see, because I did a scant quarter inch, I don't have to clip the curve. It lays down nice and flat. So I'm gonna turn on this side and I'm going to press and look how nice that curve is. So once you get it on this side, if you really feel it's a little bit wonky, now's the time to open it back up and um, take it back to the machine and fix it. So we'll do a few. So you can see that the block with the four pieces is taking shape. And then once you get your blocks together, you can really have uh, fun, you know, deciding how you want to put them all together. Drunkard's Path has so many different options. 
You can make circles, half circles, wonky paths. Now this has a little bit of glue here. Now um, my iron is ceramic coated sole plate, so anything just wipes right off. But you can also take a little bit of water on your finger and wipe that. Okay, so we're going to be doing our block like this. So they'll be matching diagonal each way. But you could do a lot of different um, options. You could make it a half circle like this if you wanted. And then later on when we get a bunch of blocks, I'll show you some other uh, traditional ways and modern ways to put it together. So now the next step will be squaring off the individual blocks and then we'll be sewing them together. So let's get set up to do that. Now let's square up our blocks. So it's supposed to be a four and a half inch finished block. So I'm going to measure uh, a quarter inch here and here and square that side up. So here's our quarter inch. And on this side, here's our quarter inch. I'll adjust my mat. off those scraps. So then I'm going to turn this around and I actually with some washi tape or you can use painters tape I marked off four and a half inches on my template my ruler and I'm going to line that up and that will give me my four and a half inch block every time. Just remember however you decide to square off your block. As long as you do every block the same, then you'll be fine. So I've already done two there. And then let's do that one more time. So quarter inch here, quarter inch down here. You might have to just eyeball that a little bit. Here's our easy guides right there. Always make sure to put your safety on your rotary cutter. Okay. And look how nice that matches up. There. So next, we're going to sew these two together, blocks together, and these two blocks together. So I have a little trick that I kind of discovered um, when I was using the glue pen. So I thought, why not um, use that to put these blocks together? I was using pins and I was basting and it just seemed like every time I got to the sewing machine, it would move. So I thought I'd put a little dot of glue there. And then with right sides together, I'm going to fold over that little piece of fabric near the top. And I'm going to line up those circles right there and press down. So you can put a pin in there if you like, but I don't even um, really need to do that. So I'm gonna do that for that one.
And then I just take these to my machine and chain stitch the blocks together. And then when I open them up, they, they really have been a perfect match. So that was kind of exciting. So let's take a look. You can always open these up and make a little bit of adjustment if you need it, but that looks great. And let's look at that one. And that one looks great too. So once you have these together and you take them to your machine, I like to use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance to put these together. Now, traditionally, a lot of quilters only use a quarter inch. Just remember, it's your quilt. You can do what you feel comfortable with. And if you prefer to use a quarter inch, please go ahead. I like to use the 3 eighths inch because then I feel like I have a nice seam allowance to open it up and press. So um, I think you'll pretty much get, you're gonna take this to the machine and do your stitches, a regular uh, probably 2.5 length on your machine. And this is what you'll end up with right here. So I've already done a couple right here. Okay, and let's open it up and take a look. And look, they look really great. They look perfect. That little bit of glue right at the top, I think is like magic. So let's move this aside and look at our mini project iron out and we'll open up those seams. So since you glued those together, remember just pull them apart a little bit before you get started. You can even finger press that down a little bit. Open that up and press. And turn to the right side and press. Look how great that looks. I feel like this method that Jen does and has um, let me share it with you today has really changed my mind about sewing curves. Okay. And then we're gonna turn that over and press. So there we go. and then we can put them together like this. So I actually do the exact same thing um, when I put these together as well, but I do another little trick. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there and I'm going to put right sides together and I'm going to really match up that seam. See right there? Okay. And then I'm going to check that out. I'm going to open that up and just take a look and look how not perfect that is. So what I will do, and then I also kind of check out the ends right there. So, um, and that's where you can actually give it a little tug to make it match perfectly when you're at the machine. So you can go ahead and you can pin this if you like. But what I like to do is take this to the machine and again, since I did a 3 8 inch seam allowance in the middle, I'm going to do the same here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here a little bit past the middle. I'm going to sew here. And as I get down here towards the end, I'm going to look and see how that looks. And I think that the bottom might have to be just tugged a tiny bit in order to get those to match perfectly. Once I have that done, I'll flip it over and then I go back from the middle and I do the same thing on this side. Right like that. And this is what you'll end up with right here. So I've used a little bit different colors here. So I'm going to open that up. And remember, you had some glue in the middle. And you're gonna give that a nice press. So 
So now um, we'll square this up and we'll go on to the sashing. Now we're going to square up our block. So I'm going to measure a quarter of an inch out from each side and I did this side and now I'll just turn this. So now it's time to start working on the sashing, the strips of fabric that go around the block. So I have a few here that I've cut out. I cut out a whole bunch of two inch strips from my um, fat quarters. And then I'm just going to play around with them and see which ones I, I like best. So I cut them a little bit longer, like a half an inch longer than the actual block itself. So the block is now about eight and a quarter inches. And so I'm going to cut this about eight and a half, nine inches. So we have, say this, I'm not sure about the green. I think I do like that one. And I think I'm going to go with these two. So I'm going to put them right sides together And you can either pin or do a little glue basting. And you're going to sew a quarter inch all the way down on each side. So the quarter inch seam allowance should give you the full circle right there. So that's what I've done here. And you can see on this side And you may need to adjust your seam allowance just a little bit, so just keep an eye on that. And now we're gonna square off this block again. We're gonna cut the tails off. And then I'm going to also trim this up. And that will be an inch and a half. And now you'll be ready to sew the side sashing on. So let me get those cut and we'll put that together. Okay, so I have my sashing on the top and the bottom and that's trimmed off on the sides. And I think that I found a couple pieces, strips, that I'm going to sew on either side to finish my block. So as before, we are going to put right sides together. And you can pin or glue baste. And you're going to sew a seam straight down the side a quarter of an inch in. And that will bring you right up to the edge of your circle. So I've done that here. And then now I need to trim up the top and bottom sashing. So I can use this as my guide. And 
then I want to trim up the remaining two that I just sewed on to the inch and a half. And then all my blocks should be the same size. So just remember, um, whatever you decide to do with your seam allowances, trimming your blocks, making them square, you just need to remember, oops, you just need to remember, you need to do it the same on all of your blocks. And then that will give you uh, your dimensions for your quilt. So here's a finished block right here. And I have another one here. So you can decide, you know, if you want to put them um, side to side, if you want to turn them around, you can even add more sashing in the middle. You just want to check and make sure that you don't need to trim anything up a little bit more. And then you're going to sew three blocks together to make the quilt top that I did. So I'm just doing a lap quilt or a crib size quilt, and it will be four rows of three blocks. So that will be 12 blocks in all. So um, go ahead and make your blocks and then I can show you how I put them all together. Now that you have three blocks sewn together, you'll continue to do four rows all together, three blocks each. And then you'll start sewing them together. So here I have three rows here, and then I will put right sides together. You can do the same thing that you did with your blocks. You could put a little bit of um, glue here from your glue pen. And then if you prefer, you can pin or clip and then sew your seam down. And then you'll have the basis of your um, crib or lap quilt. And then next we can talk about um, what we're going to do around the edge if you'd like to make it a little bit bigger and add some detailed elements to it. So let's sew that last strip on and then we can talk about finishing the quilt. So now to finish off our quilt top. Um, the center of the quilt ended up being three blocks across and four blocks down, 12 blocks all together. And a block consisted of four separate curvelets. So what I'd like to do is to make my quilt a little bit bigger without making any more blocks. And such an easy way to do that is to put a substantial border around it. So I've chosen these two fabrics. It is not from the same collection. It's actually from Free Spirit with Anna Maria Horner. And I thought they were really pretty and it uses a lot of the same colors that I used in the quilt. So I have cut two strips, the entire width of the fabric, which is 44 inches wide. And then I did the strips in six inches. So I'll show you how I did that. So first I'm going to put the sides on. So the sides is the, the length of the quilt that has the four blocks. I'm going to measure that, add two inches, and cut two strips that are six inches wide to sew onto the sides. So I'll leave a little bit on each end so I'll be able to trim it up. And what I did is I sewed that along the edge all the way down the side and then I pressed the seam open. And then I trimmed up the sides. So that will give me my measurement for the top and bottom. So I measured across the top of the quilt, which is three blocks plus the two borders on each side. So that added 12 inches minus the seam allowance to my quilt. And then I went ahead and I cut the strip to that measurement plus two inches, six inches wide, and sewed that across the entire top and bottom. And then I trimmed it up to match. So I did the exact same thing. So here it is sewn on with your seam allowance and pressed open. And then that gave me a really nice size lap quilt. It really bumped the whole quilt up 12 inches to the top and bottom. So um, next, what you'll wanna do is layer your quilt, make a sandwich 
for quilting it. So you can do a few different things. So you have your top and then you want to put your batting on the back and then the tie, entire quilt needs to have a backing. So a quilt is always three layers, top, filler, and backing. And then you can either pin baste it with safety pins or you can also um, sew baste it with say a large um, stitch, maybe even a half inch or an inch um, in length and what you want to do is regardless of what method you use you want to start from the center and work your way out so you can keep it nice and flat. I happen to do something a little bit different if I'm deciding to hand quilt it. What I do is I just put a very thin backing on it, a filler like a cotton uh, or a thin wool batting onto the back. I pin baste it and then I quilt it. And then I put my back on and then I'll do some overall quilting. That makes the quilt very supple and light and it doesn't have a lot of quilting on it. So, and then you can do a few different things. You can also just um, put your three layers together and you can go to your machine with your walking foot or your long arm and you can just do some very simple in the ditch quilting around the circle and the cross and around the edge, and then maybe do some more decorative um, stitches on the borders. So whatever you feel is uh, matches your style, um, just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to um, get my layers ready and I will show you some other ways to put the curvelets together. So here's the block that we use to make our quilt top. We made two identical blocks each and put them on the diagonal. And you can do this in any configuration you want. You can use all the same fabric and make a circle, and you can use all the same fabric on the outside as well if you'd like to make your circle pop or um, recede. And then you can do a few other um, variations. This is, I think, how the original name came about, Drunkard's Path. Let's see, can get that all in there. Okay. And then I took these blocks and put them the opposite way. And you can see this wonky path starting. So you just continue in this method till you get the whole quilt top together. And then I used some um, of Tula Pink's charm pack from this black and white linear fabric collection. And I paired it with the fabric that we used for our quilt top. So you can see I did an entire um, circle in the middle with the same fabric. And I did two different um, fabrics on the outside. But you could do all, them all the same if you like. And then one of my um, favorites that I like to do, and then very quick, once you get all these half blocks made, you just join them in strips like this. And then you can take the next, the next row and put them in the center of each of those. And you can mix and match and have fun however you would like to join them together. Well, that might be a little too close, so let me put something a little different in there. So I would suggest just start making your four and a half inch or whatever size you, you decide to do, um, your little curvelet or drunkard path blocks. And then if you want to individually put them together, put them up on your design wall or your work surface, you know, put them in all different configurations and see what you come up with. Or you can do this strip method and then sew each strip together and sew the strips together uh, and make a quilt top. So there's so many different uh, variations of this particular quilt block. You could um, look up some of the more traditional um, configurations to um, make your quilt and it really depends what type of fabric that you use. You could use a more modern palette or solid palette 
and it would give it an updated look. So I would suggest just have fun with it. Use your scraps or use a collection from your favorite designer. And don't forget, please show us what you make. So if you just um, tag us with hashtag Oliso Connects or hashtag create with Aliso, we'll be able to see what you're doing and hope we can share it with everyone else. So just enjoy and have fun. Thank you.